Skull. Filming early, drinking coffee. What are we doing today? Well, it's raining. It's, it's raining. raining today, so we're, we're not outside. outside. It hopefully will stop someday soon. We'll see. So we're gonna play inside in our own kitchen. It's also a good opportunity to show you can do all this stuff in your own kitchen. Even our tiny postage stamp kitchen, we can do things in. So, we're going to do some recipes inspired by... Eat Like a Viking, a guide to Anglo-Saxon and Viking Age food and drink by Craig Brooks. It's a new acquisition to our cooking library. It'll focus somewhere, ready? Yes, we, we got these kind of as a lark. Um, I saw them online and, and I'd never seen a, another Viking Age cookbook, so we wanted to check it out. Uh, they are a handy guide. Yeah, I good like for them. ideas, lots of nice references in there. Good references, not as, not as in-depth as others, and we liked it so much. What about the second one? Because there's two. Volume two, Electric There's Google. a volume two. Also has very nice recipes, uh, some a little more complex than the first one. Uh, cooler pictures, we got pictures of helmets and stuff. Today we're making sausages. Sausage! We're going to make the sausage. Alright, so what do we got? We got we medicine pork. or pork? Pork. Today what we're cooking eat? with pork. Uh, we have pork shoulder and pork belly. Yes, pork butt and pork belly. So yep. The belly and the butt, the good parts. It's what we had. And we have a lot of eggs. Lot of it. Brrr, big bowl. We had to, I had to dig out the big bowl in the basement. So that's about, I want to say, 12 pound pork butt and five ish pounds of pork belly, I want to say. We, we didn't measure, I don't know. I could weigh it. Yeah, we don't need to get that in depth. <laughs> so the pork butt. It was a little more than a pork loin. And imagine you can do this with a pork loin. I mean, the recipe just said pork. Probably, so, it just maybe change the fat ratio. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's fat in pork loin. Yeah, it's depending how well it's trimmed, yeah. Yeah, so, well, I mean, you're adding your fat. So we use pork belly, because I had it from the, the baking experiment, making the bacon. So we had the pork belly. What else could you use for pork fat? I think any fat. If you can get your hands on fat, talk to your butcher. Go to your grocery store, a lot of them still have meat counters. You can go talk to your butcher, see what he's got. Uh, see a lot of people use uh, lamb or goat tail. There's a lot of fat in the tail. A turkey mm -hmm. tail, as you said, mentioned before. Mm -hmm. said once the, a turkey tail has a lot of fat, so you just want to add fat to your sausage. And some cuts of pork shoulder have more fat if you get the less expensive party cut. So you take your meat and you chop it up, you chop it, chop it. And we already did this last night, we didn't film that part. We got bored. We got bored and decided to just do it and did not grab the camera. So you want kind of a coarse chop on these. A lot of recipes call for a coarse chop. You can throw them through a meat grinder. If you want to throw them through a meat grinder. Uh, some, if you do, you want a, a coarse blade or a coarse setting on your meat grinder if you have that on there. Hopefully you do. And this is the more period sausages. And I, I don't think we have tons of evidence for Viking sausages. No. It's, a reasonable assumption I think we're going by. This is one of those so many people did it we're just assume they did. I think so. I was just reading about it earlier. We don't really have any evidence, hard evidence that sausages were a thing, but there's enough circumstances around and so many different cultures made sausages. It's mm -hmm. a reasonable assumption that I think so. Vikings would have made sausage. Also you can dry and preserve them, so yeah, it's one of those things, not only, you know, I always stay away from like, oh, well, if the Romans did it, they did it, because they were kind of around, and that's always a dangerous thing, but sausages were known all over Italy, not just, you know, within the Roman Empire, and well, that's kind of an odd statement, but think about it for a minute, and they went there often, so, especially trading with the Byzantines, they would have eaten the food there, they called them the Greeks. So, and sausage is prevalent in so many different cultures. It is. It that very much didn't so. even interact with each other. It's one of those universal humans figured this thing out. Which is weird unto itself. You know, you, you, I mean, I guess if you're using the whole pig, right? You're going to do something with the guts. More than you're not just going to cook them and eat them. You're, you're going to stuff them, I guess. Why not? Makes sense. Shove the guts into the guts and eat them. Scottish, they, they made haggis. haggis. 
which is weirder. I don't know what else you do with a stomach now. Blow it up like a balloon. Worked on track. Soccer. Soccer. There we go. So what are we going to add to our meat and our fat? Uh, what do we got? I already started playing with the meat. So oh. Dirty. Uh, you got to be my assistant now. I can do that. We have some green onions. Yeah, those are fresh from the garden. I want to talk about those for a second. We bought them at the store. When you, when you buy green onions, you know, use the good greeny top bits. And then you plant the bottoms. And then they just keep growing. And you go out and you clip them every once in a while, and they're great. I love them. Do that. Pick a spot in your yard, don't mow it. and. You can also grow them in a cup of water. Yeah, a cup of water or even a little pot. Grow one or a pot inside. They'll mm -hmm. grow inside. They will. You want to chop those? You want the scissors? Or you want a knife? Uh, I'll probably scissor them, to be honest. All it's right. well, a little easier. Already. And another good pro tip is scissoring your It's just green easier onion. than trying to chop, fine chop certain herbs. Mm -hmm. See, nice and easy. And they make some cool scissors for this. They do. Herb scissors are a very cool uh, kitchen toy that we just haven't invested in yet. They make like 12 cuts in one. They always remind me of that episode of The Simpsons where Lisa gets detention, has to write things on the blackboard, and Bart teaches her that you can use the, the music thing the, to, oh, the, that they use to draw the lines in music class. Yeah. And you can write the phrase five times at once, six times. I don't know how many things. I'm not a music <laughs> guy. But... That's what they always remind me of. You want more onion in there? Probably. Uh, probably. That's I mean, it's, it's a, quite a formidable amount of meat. So instead of just salt, we are using an anti Arwins. I, I think we've mentioned anti Arwins before. I don't know if we've really explained it, though. Anti Arwins, uh, a spice shop. Yeah. Any Arwin spice, seasonings, anything you can want. I think they have a website, anyarwins.com. We'll link to it in the description. We'll link the books too. Um, it's just a great place. I had someone tell me using any Arwins in cooking is like using steroids in the Olympics. I don't agree with that. Like, it's not cheating. It's just great stuff. They're just really good quality spice blends. Quality. That's, that's the key. It's the quality. It's the quality. Ethically sourced, you know, everything's just great about it. Everyone loves Annie Arwen. She's just the best. She's an actual person. She's like Chef Boyardee. She's not just a mascot. She exists. Uh, yeah, Chef Boyardee is real. Um, so today we're actually using Annie Arwen's Dancing Bear Russian Sausage Seasoning. We've had this for a couple of years now. Um, or We've used this for a long time. We've never actually used it to make sausage, though, because it's just a great seasoning in, in a lot of stuff. So, she lists all her ingredients. Oh, she does have the website, antiarbonspices.com. She lists all the ingredients on her labels. We have kosher salt, toasted garlic and onion, cinnamon, black pepper, smoked half sharp paprika, nutmeg, marjoram, mace, nigella. Nigella? Nigella? You got me on that one, hmm. to be honest. It, yeah. Uh, which it just sounds, it's more kind of like a seasoned salt, so we're going to go with that. I don't know, maybe we're just cheating. We're cheating today. We're, we're using this. It's the good stuff. I guess we're making a Russia, a Rus sausage for Rus Vikings. Say, some of those ingredients are period, some aren't, but it tastes good. Period or, or period adjacent. I heard that term the other day. I like that. Like, is it period? Meh, nah, period adjacent. It's got a few things that wouldn't have been available but all right you want to do the honors I still oh, got yes. i got me tan so we're going to use probably most of this yeah, pour some in there let's take a look i remember it being pretty yeah it's pungent strong mix but it using it in ground meat like that it'll absorb more mix it in you really got to get your hand in there especially dealing with this much meat that's a lot of meat if you're not sure of your casings versus your meat ratio. I'd always err on the side and caution to make too much. The great thing about ground meat, you can always freeze it, throw it in the fridge, and you can always just make it into hamburgers. Fry it up. Yeah, just Little fry patties. it up. Make patties, make a, a big super flavor, sausage flavored meatloaf. <laughs> um, and it is, it's sausage. You can make your sausage gravy out of it. You make your own sausage gravy. You can do a Eat lot of stuff with it. Oh yeah. That's a lot. Well, this is supposedly how much one of our casings... Oh, you want to tell them about the casings? Oh, sure. 
uh, we are using artificial casings today. We are not using natural casings. The artificial ones you don't have to soak. Uh, very explicitly says that on the package. It makes a boatload of sausage, so we'll see how how much we how many many feet we end up with, but it should be a lot. Our sausage casings, they're, they're collagen casings, all the artificial ones. Um, we didn't want to use the natural ones. I, 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 it's, I have nothing against them. They're just, uh, from what I've read, are more difficult to deal with. And this is our first time doing this. We've never done sausage. You said you can do this with your KitchenAid. You can do this with your stand mixer if it has the attachment. You can use the grinder, the stuffer. We just don't have the attachment. We, we, we like to do things by hands. We're going to literally get our hands dirty. And, At least and, the first time. So we mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. I'm a little closer. Mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. And the mix and mix and mix. And just do that until it looks like sausage. It smells good. It does smell good. It smells like sausage. Yeah. And pork. Yep. Which I... Go dip your jewelry in your meat. <laughs> That's a life lesson right there. <laughs> That's why I don't wear my long jewelry while I'm fire cooking. Yeah, it's smart. <laughs> Be conscious of what you're wearing when doing these projects. Yeah, it should look like sausage. I don't know, if you've never taken apart a casing or bought it not in the casing, it looks like that. It does. Marbled, I guess would be the word. Look for a marbling. Mm-hmm. All right, should we try stuffing this? Sure. So we have our, our natural but not real casings. Tied off on the end. And we have our sausage horn, which uh, in a lot of the cookbooks, in the period ones, they tell you to use an actual horn, which is, is a method that obviously would have been more period. Uh, I don't think they would have bought a plastic one. But yeah, you can cut the tip off a cow horn. The nice thing about these is, is the way the casings are made and the horns are made now, the, the stuffer things are made, they're made to size each other and fit each other. Yes. Uh, fitting it on a, a regular horn, which is why I didn't attempt that, seemed difficult. I, I haven't done this in 50 million years, so we're going to see if I can get this to work. Do you want the wooden spoon? We're, we're going to need that eventually, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When when you do get air pockets, and you will throughout, you're you're gonna you're gonna prick those with a toothpick or something. Oh, do you want me to do that? To oh no, it's coming out the bottom. It's coming out. I, I I'm trying to get the air to come up the horn and out instead of being at the end. Like yeah, you don't want to push too hard because then you can rupture the yeah, casing. Yeah, you don't want to rupture your casing. Oh look at that! It's definitely working. Woo <laughs> woo! The dog is excited about it. He loves sausage. Air pocket. I can definitely see why people buy the modern stuffer, though. The, the KitchenAid machine. Yeah. <laughs> I can definitely I'll bring this a little closer. Let me get, get this set up. And... and I'm trying not to split on the floor, so. And you kind of release a little of the casing and shove more meat through it. And it's. I think it'd be flappier than your commercial sausage. That's okay. I think things that don't look modern and machine made always look more period. Of course, they probably have master sausage stuffers that could make them look like the modern ones. <laughs> probably. But uh, yeah, it always looks more period if it doesn't look modern, right? I don't know. I've never made sausage before, so. Oh, looks like you're doing a great job to me. Not bad. We're going to be stuffing sausage for that's all right, I can help. Well, it's raining and we don't have anything else to do, so... <laughs> it's starting to look like a thing. Yeah. I'm burping the sausage. So you're, you're working an air pocket out of there? I'm working an air pocket out. We don't uh -huh. have quite enough extra... 
uh, casing at the top to tie the knot very well, but I realized I can kind of smush the sausage around to move an air pocket to get it packed tighter to give me more room at the top. That's a good way to get rid of air pockets. Yeah, it's a little, you know, probably not the easier way would be... To squeeze some meat out of the end and then just tie it? <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, what were you going to say? I don't know. Precision knot tying. There. Yeah. And it's a sausage. There. It's not bad. We've got some air packets. It's what, about four foot long? Probably. No, yeah, they are old. Hmm. Oh, my tape measure support works. Oh, there's one. Okay. We have 12 in every drawer. Mm -hmm. and you can the one. That is a 41 inch sausage right there. It's not bad. Air pockets. What do you do with air pockets? You get yourself a toothpick. You can do this with a knife. You can do this with a fork tying. Toothpicks are just nice, sharp, pointy sticks. And you don't want a bunch of holes, but we find an air package. Put a little just a little prick. Just a little prick. I said, you want to... And that'll help work some of the air out, you know. Which is the next step, is you, you let it dry for at least a couple hours. So my mother used to hang them in the garage overnight. Um, that's always an option. You can throw them in the fridge overnight. We see more sanitary. Here's our sausage. You, you probably tell we didn't link it. As you're stuffing, we might try to do it. You can put a twist in it, a couple twists, and you get your nice links. We're going for a, an, an easier to handle rope style sausage. Uh, you coil it up and then let it dry. So there's 41 inches of sausage. And this is how much meat we have left. So we're probably going to be doing this a while. From a company in Buffalo, New York, which is neat. A lot, a lot of Italians in Buffalo, so it's good. Huh? Collagen casing, fresh. Buffalo, New York. Yeah. So I mentioned uh, in the recipe, if you remember, it said soak your casings. These say right on there, do not soak. I don't know if that's the case for all collagen casing or just this one. I have no idea. But uh, for this one at least, you don't need to soak it. Cleaner tip. All right, so I just kind of work it on there and then load it up. I don't know if this is the correct way to do any of this, so I would assume, you know, maybe with the right size horn or a smaller one, you just shove it down the whole casing. But I've been loading this one up. I use the bigger one because I can actually fit my fat fingers down there to do this. Assuming things work in a similar way, uh, we should get another 41 inch piece. Which I think this casing and all will do, I want to say, 20 some odd feet. So we're going to be here a while. Well, we'll just go. Uh, again, the nice thing about this project is when you're sick of it, you can either freeze the meat and say, well, now I have loose sausage for doing something else. You can fry it up right then and there if you feel like it. Uh, you got options. You're not stuck doing this all, all day. You got options. So, put some of that off. I'll put my net ski in the bottom of this, and that's it, just a simple net. That's all you do on these. Nothing fancy. There's no special sausage secret to this as far as I know. There might be. Someone out there is probably going to yell at me and say, oh, you got to do this, that, and the other thing. Special super secret sausage knot. Well, you make a video then. Because this one's mine. Alrighty. Maybe. Yeah, it seems tight enough. And then uh, I'll show you a little more. I can actually... I learned a few things, it was nice. So we're gonna try to, yeah, right from the tip, there we go. That's one thing I learned is if you start with some meat already at the bottom, you don't end up with a big air pocket on the bottom. You draw a little out. Here, shove some meat down in there. 
here's the nice thing, you want to hold it by here. I was holding it up here earlier and too much casing was just popping out. You kind of want to hold it on the bottom. Find that shoving your thumb down first to kind of cram some meat down helps. And then your middle finger is longer and can kind of ram the meat through the tube. So you load it up with your thumb and then you ramrod it with your middle. That sounds dirty. I apologize. Or maybe I don't. I don't know. Maybe you like it dirty. Maybe that makes for more entertaining, interesting stuff. I've, I've avoided making a lot of dirty jokes during this because there's, there's a lot of, obviously, a lot of phallic going on. Yeah, see? Big air pocket in the bottom. That's, hey, I'm not a professional. What do you want? You do it at home, you get better at it, and then you tell me, hey, thanks for the inspiration, but I'm better at it than you. And I'll say, well, that's cool. Good for you. There's a bit of zen to it, too. Like you get into a rhythm and there's zen. Like, yeah. It almost reminds me if I was squeezing harder of Gak. I don't remember Gak. Gak? Yeah, Gak. The goopy goop stuff. Just play with as a kid. Really didn't do anything except dry up and piss off your mother. But you can make it fart in a container so everyone loved it. Because it really didn't take much to entertain us as kids. I don't know if it was just us, if we were simpler, if we were dumber. We were easily entertained by just some goop that kind of made furry noises and then would dry in places. I don't know. Was it just me? Maybe. Alright, now, a little more of the same. We're going to try to do this link thing. What if he poked a tiny air hole in the bottom first? Hmm, give that a shot. Where's our toothpick? Where'd our toothpick at? There, son. It's our only toothpick. Hopefully it doesn't smush out, but it doesn't like explode, but... Yeah, she helps me see the sausage better, so this is apparently the better way to do it. I was just thinking if you can get some of the air out at the beginning. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you're still gonna end up with air bubbles, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. I'm not a master sausage maker, so. Well, I guess that only works for the first one. We're all learning together. Go team us. Go team Viking. <laughs> okay. Put a little twist in there. Let's see what happens. The vacuum actually pulled a little meat out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, I can tell, but... I wonder what keeps it from coming uncoiled. That's what I was wondering. I guess I don't know, we'll have to watch a video on that one. <laughs> now we're going to figure it out. Never watch this video. Don't watch other videos. <laughs> right, right. Our video. We'll figure it out eventually. It's going to be a 12-hour video of us stuffing sausage and figuring out how to stuff sausage. And I mean, maybe the casing kind of mushes together because it's got the moisture in it after a while, so it... I mean, I know they're hard to cut apart when you get them from, like, Staggerwalds from our local meat market. That's true. Yeah, they're not easy. Mm-hmm. They're pretty tough that, like, you actually have to work to separate them. Look at that. It's a link, though. Fun. A link to the past. It's dangerous to go alone. Take the sausage. <laughs> I can see. See, we're trying to do it on our counter. If we're doing this at home, I'd recommend trying it like at your table. That's probably good for that one. Okay. Yeah, you gotta make sure you're turning them all the same way. Yep. This is a good team effort. Hey, pop a couple holes as we go. A little. You, know, you can definitely tell, like, oh, all right, yeah, there's a lot of pressure in there. It makes sense that you have to poke some holes because otherwise they do, they just explode out. Good, to, good team effort. We'll tag team our sausage. 
It's a learning experience. Yeah, this is kind of working because I can see what I'm doing better. I can see, shove some through, let out a little bit. It's a little easier to hold this way. Again, I'm, I'm working at kind of a funny angle here, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to twist them in the opposite direction. Is you? that it? Yeah, twist them the okay. opposite, so... Yeah. So it doesn't untwist when you twist it. Well, I can, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm twisting them in the same direction, but yeah, then it's yeah, untwisting then, the one yeah. behind it. So you want to do opposite. Okay, so the next one, i got to go this way. Learning! We're going to twist, we think, we're going to test out this theory, twisting in the opposite direction. Experimental kitchen magic. This seems to be working pretty well. Not bad. Uh, you know, jump the gun here, but... Yeah, we may be tag-teaming the rest of these and making links. That's okay with me. This is making me hungry, though. It smells good. In another 12 hours, we can start cooking. Hooray! To the one that we had the blowout on, maybe we'll try to pan for that one. Yeah, see how it tastes? Duct tape it. Duct tape it. Well, it just means that'll, that little split's going to be there. We could try. I don't know how complicated we want to get, but we could actually cut it, squeeze meat out of both ends, and then try to tie it off there. Oh, well, that's true. It is an option. I don't know if everybody wants to continue. <laughs> Watch me struggle. I just wanted to, I mean, I did most of this. Out. I okay. just wanted to hold up the end result. Yeah, it takes more to tie it off than you you think. Yeah, I mean, the, the casing is pretty cheap, so um, leave yourself plenty. Don't worry about wasting casing, I guess. I, I gotta, I'm talking to myself, not you guys. <laughs> I gotta remind myself, like. Well, it's a valid thing to tell people, though. Yeah. Like, it is harder to tie it. than you think. They are hard to tie. Don't worry about wasting an extra there. two inches of casing. Alrighty. Hold up our links. We figured out links! Ta -da! It's coming in uh -oh. We didn't figure out links! Woo, 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 woo. The dog woo. is excited! As always. Alright. Alright, in like 12 woo. hours we'll be cooking. Fixing the sausages. I'm trying to fix the couple of sausages that exploded on us. So we have a couple little short ones now that are a little stumpy, but that's okay. But now they'll hold together. They still taste good. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. Still Better than it good. falling apart, I guess. There's keeping a them, of sausage. Keeping them tied is kind of fascinating. <laughs> Definitely sort of a struggle. Uh oh. <laughs> One of the tears. Ripped in half. Well, that was kind of the plan anyways. Yeah. Needed to cut them apart. That is one of our casings. And that's how much meat we have left still. I think we got rid of quite a bit. Yes, quite a bit. I don't know. I'd say more than half. Definitely more than half. This bowl is really full. So once your sausage is done and you're done making your repairs, you're pulling to back to repair your sausages. And you want to let them dry. So all recipes say at least two hours. Again, you can dry them overnight. Uh, a little faster in the fridge, I'm sure. Probably. I don't know. Well, yeah, we'll try it. I mean, the out. goal is to dry the casing out a bit. Yeah. I, know. I think the goal is to dry the meat. That oh, would take longer than know. a few hours. Someone Google it. <laughs> Google that for us, please. Yeah. Traditionally, sausages are boiled. 
kind of like when you're a kid and you open a can of soup and then you cook your hot dogs in it. Ah, that's what I used to I do. I never did that. No? No, I never did that. that. That might be a you thing. It's a fairly common thing, I think. You can make your soup, you boil your hot dogs right in there. That's, that's the first time hearing of it. No. This broth is obviously still very hot and boiling, so... Yeah, it's ready to go. I'll drop our sausages in there. Now the recipe doesn't say, it just says cook in the broth. And or liquid. Now that I'm putting them in, maybe a little more would have been prudent, but we'll just rotate them around. Yeah. Well, we can always add water still if we feel I, the need to. I think this will be all right. Uh, they'll still cook. They'll still yeah. cook. Actually, do, you want, do we want to throw the lid back on? Let them cook in there yeah, a bit would, with the yeah. lid on? Yeah. So we selected four random sausages. Oh, two of them split. Oh. Two of them split already. We did not pop enough air bubbles. One of them started out split. Yes, Let this one was split. This one was not. So this will be a fun experiment. We'll see how it cooks. It kind of looks like the Skyrim symbol. If instead of a dragon, it was a sausage in the middle. It does. You're right. Yeah. All right. Let's throw the lid on. See what happens. Yeah, we'll give them five minutes. Yeah, All right, we'll check back in a bit. Let's take a look. How we doing? All right. How did we do? Ta -da. Not great. Wah, wah. So I think the heat was a little too hot. Mm -hmm. Our casing has essentially dissolved. Um, I think these would be better if I had turned the heat off and just let the hot water cook them slowly because they're mm -hmm. not done yet. I can tell they're not done yet. Um, or you they still held their shape, though. They did. They did. Or you, if you fried them at a low heat. I'm thinking the casing dissolved because the water is so hot. Um, it just completely pulled back. <laughs> I think so. Or slow fry them. It sounds like we're making more sausage today <laughs> than we originally intended. We're going to get it right. Ta-da! For our friends and, and YouTube fans. Frim. There we busted. go. The sausage, whoop! Now it's getting brittle. What? Oh, that's interesting. Mm. I think it's done. So our sausage experiment where the casings disintegrated. I believe the sausages are done now. They still hold their shape. So they do still those. hold their shape. Now us being us, we have to try it again. We will. Absolutely. We weren't going to cook at all, but we're going to cook some more to try to see if we can get the casings there. And who knows? That could be period. Now, they don't look, I wouldn't say could be. well done. Could be. They are cooked. Potentially. They are not well done, which might make some folks squeamish. We can always throw them back in the pan. Well, we, yeah, we can always fry them up afterwards, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's period. I think it's definitely safe to say that, oh, this the, didn't quite come out right, but we're going to eat it anyway. The casings well, definitely, definitely dissolved. It's definitely period. <laughs> the collagen casings definitely, definitely dissolved in that yeah. super hot water. I guess we'll have to do another 20 pounds of natural casings and see the difference. So do we want to throw it in this water or reheat the water? Let's throw it in this water because this right. is not super hot. We're now going to try adding a link to this not super hot water. We've had some links at room temperature. Just a small link. That's a good size rope. You can still feed a, well, a third small of an little. Italian family. Woo! Let's the dog is excited here. once again. He's always excited. Uh, I could think of. So we're gonna a we're gonna let that poach. That barely feed. Yeah, this is a small Italian family or a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna let this poach, and the, it is off. So it's just the residual heat from the cast iron. We'll let it sit for a little while. I think the other option would be like a low heat dry pan. Um, but we'll poach them in here, see what happens. Stay tuned. It is now. All right. We're going to check our round two of sausages. All right. They're definitely not done yet, but we've had only one explosion. Oh, yeah. 
I that's think. That's working a lot better. It's definitely. Oh, that one looks ooh, a little. That uh, one's a little poofy. Yeah. Oh, this one's a little poofy. So I think this experiment is telling us these casings are better suited to frying than boiling. I think it's telling us we should have popped more air bubbles. Maybe. Maybe that too. We did pack them quite tight. Uh, as we as you got better at the sausage making, um, I think to finish them off, I'm gonna pull them out and put them in the bigger cast iron to fry. Oh, what a good idea! I think that's a better idea. And we're doing all this on our stove. Yeah. You can use cast iron on the stove. It's gonna be. A little awkward heat. This pot ends off, off off center because it's so large, but that's all right. Lalioi. I mean, you know, more period bacon grease is, or animal fat is more period, but olive oil is what we have close mm. in hand. I use olive oil for everything. Yeah. Oh, so do we. For for the Health cast brothers. iron, I go with the <laughs> the higher smoke point oils because yeah. they do heat them so hot. This is yeah, hot water poaching not ideal for this sausage casing. And now we know. Yeah, it's these casings. They're just very soft. That's the hand on point, so I need it to be. Uh, hold the tongs. Well, now I know the case for natural casings. I can try uh, 30 pounds of that next. <laughs> yeah, these are. These are frying. They're frying casings. Or smoking. Is there enough room in there for the last oh, one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These would be good in the smoker for sure. Yeah, these casings really They dissolve in water. What? Yeah. It doesn't now that I think about it surprise me too much. Collagen, yeah. Yeah, collagen. Uh, I would definitely try them in a smoker. I would try them for drying. Uh, but I think for boiling, you really have to go with the natural casing. The, it won't dissolve. I'll try those someday. What do you think, Grim? We just want some. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think Grim's okay either way. Grim! <laughs> We'll fry these up and get back to you. Let's eat something. Let's try some stuff. Sausage experiment. Great. Rub it up, dub. Collagen casing. Rub. Fry them, smoke them. Don't boil hey, it. Loki. I'll go first with the fried. So these All are the right. fried, they're the brown they're ones. They just came out. I'm going to try some of the shank. Okay, I'll go first in a moment with the fried. Would you like a fork? Well, I already dirty this so yeah. Well, I meant to get both. The goat is is fabulous. I mm. snap a little piece. Oh, burning me. Oh. Mm -hmm. You're like a child. A goat. You know where I am. The goat's delicious. Mm -hmm. Dip it in the berry sauce. I was the cook in the kitchen. I snuck a taste. The goat in the berry sauce, also delicious. Goat and berry sauce. Mmm. And that leg has a really good flavor. The fried sausage is good. Yeah. Yeah. Sausages are sausages. No? Yeah, they taste like sausages. They taste like sausages. They're good. Got a rough chop on them. They do. Rough grind, so they're that's, more rustic that's more sausage. Period. Um. Yeah, they're good. We'll try smoking a bunch. Probably do it. That's what we'll do. So, gotta give some to Ma, and we'll smoke the rest. 
Like sausage. travel sausage, you didn't yeah. smoke sausage. We got Brussels, the lamb was good. Lamb was good, the berry sausage. The sausage good. experiment is ongoing. And tasty, edible. Though. Tasty. Yeah, not bad. They taste I consider good. it a win. I wouldn't really well, uh, eat you, Thrim. I would. So we'll do some more. Until then. Skull! Das Vidania! Das Vidania! Pasta lasagna, don't get Asta any la of it. Pasta Pasta. Tour of Italy.